So there is a viral video featuring Elizabeth Warren on Bill Moyer where she describes how Hillary Clinton changed her position on a bankruptcy bill after taking money from special interests that pushed for it. Now, most of you have seen it. I actually played it on the last episode of The Humanist Report. Uh, and we all also know that last week, uh, Hillary Clinton was endorsed by Elizabeth Warren. Now, with that in mind, she was on The View to talk about her endorsement and to talk about her brave attacks on Donald Trump. And I was actually blown away by the fact that they actually asked her a real substantive question. So they decided to ask Elizabeth Warren how she could endorse Hillary Clinton in spite of the fact that she criticized Hillary Clinton for changing her position as a result of taking money from special interests. Here's what she had to say. Back in your book, you devoted a couple of pages in your book uh, to this bankruptcy legislation with then First Lady Hillary Clinton. She pledged to stop it, she did, but then she flip-flopped when she was a senator. You blamed it on campaign contributions. Can you unequivocally say that she has never changed a view based on donations? Look, she has said now that she regrets that vote, and I appreciate that. Because what she has also said as she has run for president is that she will put more restrictions on Wall Street and that she will veto any legislation to roll back any of the financial reforms we put in after the last crash. And you know, when you compare that with where Donald Trump and the Republicans are, Donald Trump has already offered his big wet kiss to Wall Street. He has said, hey guys, if I get in, I'm going to roll back all of those financial regulations because they make it too hard for the banks to cheat people. Well, to me, that's a huge difference. And one reason I wanted to be out there to campaign for Hillary Clinton yesterday. I know you so basically, she has three main reasons as to why she could still endorse Hillary Clinton. One is that Hillary Clinton said she regrets that vote. Okay. Two is that uh, Hillary Clinton contends that she will put more restrictions on Wall Street. Uh, and three... Look at the alternative. It's Donald Trump. I mean, do you really want Donald Trump to become the next president? Look, I'm not denying uh, that Donald Trump will most likely give away a lot to Wall Street and the rich. Just look at his tax plan. Uh, but I want to touch on each of those three points because I think Elizabeth Warren is wrong. Now, first, she says that Hillary Clinton regrets her vote. Let me tell you why that's not persuasive. Because Hillary Clinton regrets a lot. She regrets her vote for the Iraq war. She also regrets lobbying for the 1994 crime bill that increased mass incarceration of African Americans and Latinos. She regrets calling them super predators. And also she regrets that she lobbied for and supported the Defense of Marriage Act, which banned marriage at the federal level for LGBT people. And she also probably regrets her support for Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which banned gay people from serving openly in the military. And I'm sure she also regrets calling the TPP the gold standard. Now, at the end of the day, I don't necessarily care as much about what she regrets so much as I care about what she doesn't regret. Hillary Clinton currently doesn't regret the fact that she voted for the Patriot Act or that she pushed for intervention in Libya or that she only supports a $12 minimum wage or that she supports the death penalty or she doesn't support legalizing marijuana, or that she doesn't care about the fact that she supported a coup in Honduras, or that she fought against the 61 cent minimum wage in Haiti, or how she thinks Edward Snowden is a criminal, but she isn't. So those things that she doesn't regret, but should, are what scare me the most about Hillary Clinton. Now, here's why Elizabeth Warren is wrong. So you described an explicit example as to how Hillary Clinton changed her position on a policy because of money she received. That's direct evidence of corruption. But if she proved that she has the capacity to be corrupted, in which that's not the only example, but with that one example, even if you isolate that incident where she took money uh, from special interests who wanted the bankruptcy bill passed, well, doesn't that prove that she has the capacity to be corrupted? Thus, she's likely to do it again in the future? I mean, are you not worried about other special interests donating to her? Because she is taking money virtually from every special interest in existence. And furthermore, what if we extrapolate that logic anywhere else? So Elizabeth Warren, uh, she's really hard on Wall Street, right? She wants to break up the big banks and reinstate Glass-Steagall. Well, what if we apply that same logic? What if uh, Wall Street contends that they really regret crashing the economy in 2008? Well, look, they regret it. They said they regret it. I appreciate that, right? So why should we do any more regulation on them? They said that they regret it. So shouldn't we forgive them, Elizabeth Warren? I mean, why is that argument any less ridiculous than the one you're making? 
It's not. Now, getting to her second point, she says that Hillary Clinton claims she will put more regulations on Wall Street uh, and veto any efforts to deregulate Wall Street further, except the regulations that she's proposing won't suffice, Elizabeth. You know this more than most people, which is why this is incredibly frustrating. She's not in favor of reinstating Glass-Steagall, and she's not in favor of breaking up the big banks. And you are. Furthermore, her type of reform will be like the Dodd-Frank reform where it doesn't do much and ultimately will just be watered down over time, but the Democrats will still brag about it as though they accomplished this big achievement. It doesn't do much. It still doesn't rain in Wall Street. They're still going crazy. They're still gambling with our money and the banks are bigger than ever and they're not broken up yet. So that's what Hillary Clinton wants to propose. And furthermore, do you really think she's going to veto every bill? Because what Republicans and Democrats will do is they'll sneak in uh, legislation to deregulate Wall Street into spending bills and other bills that aren't related. So, of course, she's going to allow them to deregulate Wall Street. She's going to want them to deregulate Wall Street because she's taking millions of dollars from them. And furthermore, she's given private speeches to Goldman Sachs and refuses to release those transcripts. So she doesn't even want us to know what she said to them. So do you really think that she's going to be hard on Wall Street? Do you really buy that, Elizabeth Warren? I don't think you do. I think you're smarter than that. I know that you don't believe Hillary Clinton gives a damn about reforming Wall Street, but becoming her vice president is more important to you, apparently, Elizabeth. So you prioritized your own self-interest above the interest of the American people. That's not very progressive at all. Now, finally, she trots out the most tired argument in the universe, the lesser of two evils argument. Well, look, do you really not want to support Hillary Clinton and risk a Donald Trump presidency? Uh, no, you don't get to make that argument, Elizabeth, because you could have supported someone who was not Hillary Clinton. You could have supported Bernie Sanders. You could have endorsed him, endorsed him in Massachusetts, and maybe that wouldn't have led to him winning altogether, but it could have given him the edge in uh, Massachusetts. It could have given him more media coverage, just like your endorsement of Hillary Clinton is getting you more media coverage now. So don't give me that bullshit argument. You could have done more to give us something better than the lesser of two evils. You could have given us an actual real progressive option, but you decided not to do that. You decided to run away from your principles. You decided to endorse Wall Street itself. So don't give me that bullshit. You don't get to make that argument. We had the choice. You had the choice. And you said no. Here's what Elizabeth Warren doesn't even realize. Why is it, does she ever think, why do they never cover her in the media when she rails against Wall Street, when she talks about breaking up the big banks? Why is it that her fellow Democrats in the Senate never commend her when she does these things, that they kind of plug their ears and run away? Does she ever question, hmm, maybe I'm just being a stooge for Hillary Clinton and the Democratic establishment, and maybe they're only trotting me out here because I'm supporting Hillary Clinton. Maybe they don't actually give a shit about any of my progressive policies uh, when it comes down to it, maybe I'm only here because I'm being a stooge and a puppet for Hillary. So the conclusion is that Elizabeth Warren embarrassed herself. I've said it before. I'll say it again. You completely embarrassed yourself. Uh, you sold yourself out because by endorsing Hillary Clinton, you're endorsing Wall Street and Monsanto and the big businesses that you always rail against. So you did this because you really want to be the VP. How embarrassing is that you are willing to prioritize your own self-interest above your principles. And the worst part is that you didn't have to just be the VP. You could have been the president. If you would have run against Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders probably wouldn't have entered the race and you probably would have won. Like this was all done for nothing. You sold yourself out for nothing. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's really frustrating and just downright embarrassing. And I get criticism even from more progressives because I criticize Elizabeth Warren. And look, I'm not making her public enemy number one. I don't hate Elizabeth Warren. I'm not out to destroy her career. I'm just saying that this is someone who was a hero to me forever and she sold herself out, she sold herself short, and she is now a stooge for the Democratic establishment that she used to fight against, and it's just so frustrating to me.